Hi Stampers, I'm Mary Nabe. Welcome to my Stampin' Peace Studio in Columbus, Ohio. Over the last five videos, you have seen me demonstrate five different easy one sheet wonders and all of them featuring a different sheet of the Fresh as a Daisy Designer Series paper. Today's video is the last in the series of six videos and we are going to be doing seven cards with this sheet of designer series paper. In the demonstration, I will show you how to cut this and then I will demonstrate each of the seven different cards made with this one sheet. So let's get started. Because each of the seven cards in this video are completely different, I'm not going to show you those seven cards ahead of time, but we are going to start by showing you how to cut this beautiful piece of designer series paper. As you can see, there is some direction to the DSP. So consider this the top with the pink square in the upper left. You're going to turn that designer series paper 90 degrees and then you're going to cut right along this line, which is at four inches. The next thing we're going to do is turn it back to this direction. So I've got the white daisies with the wild wheat background in the lower right corner. And then I'm going to cut at this line. And then before I do any other cuts, I'm going to turn it back and cut along this line at four inches. And quite honestly, the um, main measurements are not difficult, but really all you have to do is cut between the lines of these various shapes, rectangles and, and squares, etc. So I'm going to do that. And this. And I can even, we'll even lay these out to show you once I've cut all of them into separate pieces. And don't forget these to cut between these last two rectangles. So now let me lay this out for you so you can see what it looked like originally before we did all of the various cuts. Kind of like putting a puzzle back together. Okay, so there's a good look at the whole sheet once it's been cut into all the separate pieces. So now let's start making some cards with these. This is the first card. And it uses this piece of designer series paper. My card base is made from wild wheat cardstock and it measures five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored at four and a quarter in the middle of that long side. I'm adding a piece of five and a quarter by four inch basic white to the inside of my card and then adding this beautiful piece of designer series paper. It features the colors <clears throat> pretty peacock and wild wheat and cutting it 
gives us a piece of five and a quarter by four inches. Super easy. Oops, I shouldn't have stuck that on yet. So I also wanted to add, which I should have done before I added this piece of designer series paper to my card front. Oops, All right. I'm just gonna add this piece of wild wheat, wild wheat ribbon, probably about oh one to one and a quarter inch above the bottom of the piece of DSP. And I'm just adhering the ends on the back side of it. That looks pretty straight. And now I'll put it on my card front. Just centering that piece. I have die cut these daisies from the same two colors, Wild Wheat and Pretty Peacock. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment right here in the Pretty Peacock ink. And I'm using the sentiment, your friendship means everything. Because this stamp set is photopolymer, it makes it real easy to get that sentiment right where we want it. And I'm going to adhere my sentiment to the, um, basically to the right side of my card front. Probably about oh, three quarters of an inch or so from the side. And I put that on dimensionals. And then finally, I'm going to add my two flowers to the card front, also with dimensionals. This wild wheat color actually takes on kind of um, a goldish hue at times, especially in this DSP. I'm seeing a lot of golden color. And that is my first card. All right, let's make our second card. Here's the second one. Set this aside. The first thing I want to do is add my ribbon. This is the copper clay textured ribbon to that card front, or to the DSP, I should say. And I'm adhering it so it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch above the bottom edge of the DSP. I'm just adhering the ends along the back. When I'm adhering ribbons like this, I really just like to adhere the ends on the back side. I don't like to put adhesive under the ribbon on the front side of the card. I feel like it just lays um, nicer when you do it this way and do not have adhesive underneath that main section of the ribbon. I have an Azure Afternoon card base. Again, five and a half by eight and a half inches scored at four and a quarter inches on the long side. Adding that to my front. Before I forget, I'm going to add this piece of basic white to the inside of my card. That makes writing messages and re reading messages on the inside card easier if we have a nice um, 
white or light neutral color. And now I'm going to stamp a sentiment here. This is going to be the birthday sentiment. Wishing you the brightest birthday, and I'm stamping it in Azure Afternoon ink. And I'm going to add this sentiment again with a couple of dimensionals. And this time I'm adding the sentiment right to the center of that ribbon. Press it down. Okay. It's also good when you're adhering on top of a ribbon, put your dimensionals or adhesives in a way that they will catch the card front as well as the ribbon. If you have the adhesive behind the sentiment just on the ribbon, it can move around a little bit. This way, if you have um, your dimensionals or whatever adhesive you're using, grab the card front itself, then that sentiment is not able to move around at all. And I'm going to finish this card off with some faceted dots, or solid gems are called, adhesive back solid gems. And I'm going to use all three sizes of the copper clay embellishment. I'm gonna put the largest one on both the left and right side. I wanna move that one over a little bit. Whoop, I can pick it up. there. And then I'm going to add the medium size one right next to the large one. And I'm going to finish off by adding the smallest size gem to each side of the sentiment as well. And there you have the second card completed. Let's move on to our third card. Here's that third card, another birthday card. Look how beautiful this piece of designer series paper is. If you're like me, you see a scene, right? The ground, the earth, the sky, could even be a sunrise or sunset with the brightness right in here. And in that brightest section of the DSP is where I'm going to stamp the birthday sentiment. And I'm keeping this very, very simple because I didn't want to take away from how pretty this piece of designer series paper is. Now, before I adhere it, I will stamp the same birthday sentiment also in the Azure Afternoon ink. I'm gonna stamp it pretty much right in the center of my card centered left to right. in that lightest area of the DSP. And then I went ahead and die stamped some, this trio of flowers from the Cheerful Daisies bundle, it's right here. And then I die cut it and then I added some of the solid gems in copper clay. So I'm going to put this on my card front with a couple of dimensionals. When you have designer series paper that's so beautiful, it really is okay to just let that designer series paper do the work for you. 
In other words, you don't have to do a lot to beautiful designer series papers. Oops, you know, I need to trim this edge a little bit. It looks like I got... I was off just a little bit on my snipping or paper trimming originally. So I'm just gonna cut that off so it looks a little neater. Yes, that's better. And there is my third card. Okay, on to card number four. Isn't that pretty? And again, we're letting that beautiful designer series paper work for us. My card base is made from early espresso cardstock. Same A2 size, oops, same A2 size as the other card bases. Again, adding white five and a quarter by four inches to the middle. And then I'm going to take this piece of designer series paper and I want it to have even an even border of early espresso around it on the top, right, and bottom sides. Okay. So you'll have more of the early espresso color showing to the left of the designer series paper. Then I've cut a piece of wild wheat ribbon. Absolutely love this in color ribbon. I love the texture of it. I love that it's got a little bit of um, sheen to it giving us a little shimmer and shine. And I'm going to simply tie a knot on the upper part of the cart front. Just like that, and I'm going to trim the ends at an angle. Just gives it a nice, clean, professional look. And then the last thing I'm going to do is use some mini dimensionals to add my sentiment. This piece of um, white cardstock was cut to a quarter inch by two and a half inches, quarter inch by two and a half inches. If you want to go a little bit um, higher, maybe three eighths of an inch or half inch to make it easier for you to stamp the sentiment, by all means do it. But keep in mind, it's pretty easy to stamp this small sentiment on the strip because we're using a photopolymer stamp that we can see right through. And I'm just going to center this left to right towards the bottom of the DSP. And voila, that card is finished. That was card number four. And the next one is a fun fold. And before we actually put this card together, what I want to show you is I'm cutting this piece of designer series paper down. And you'll see that this is one inch wide, so four inch by one inch. And then on the inside, I also have a four inch by one inch piece of this striped crushed curry um, 
designer series paper. And the last bit of that, because this is wider than two inches, that last bit we'll be using on our next card. So I'm cutting two one inch strips for this card and then the three quarter inch strip that's left will be used on my next card. Now, many of you know this fun fold as um, the book binder fold or the photo album fold. Please call it whatever you like. I've heard both names. And I'm going to use some multi-purpose glue to seal this part of my card base. So let me go over the dimensions for you. The dimensions for this card base are four and a quarter by 11 inches and then I scored it four and a quarter inches and five and a half inches. So four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock. And on the long side, I scored it four and a quarter and five and a half. And then I'm just going to fold that over and I want to seal this part, this left um, column to the inside. And then I'm going to start adding my three pieces of designer series paper. One of the one by four inch strips will go on that left part of the card. This <clears throat> four inch square with the white daisies on the bubble bath background bubble bath color goes right there on front and then I've also cut a four inch by four inch square of basic white to adhere to the inside and that second one inch by four inch rectangle or strip I'm going to adhere to the right end all the way up to the right edge of my basic white cardstock and then to finish this off I made a simple bow from linen thread and I've rolled up a single mini glue dot to adhere it to my card front and I think I'll trim these ends just a bit now that I have the bow on my card. Okay, that is card number five, an easy fun fold card. Okay, here is card number six. And before we start putting this all together, what I want to show you is how I added the color for my, I guess I'll call them Black Eyed Susans and the leaves. And what you want to know with this is, I'm gonna bring in some scrap paper. This is one die cut. This is just one of many dies in the Cheerful Daisies die collection. And this is what I used. I cut this from white cardstock to get this piece. Now I want to show you how I added the color. Yes, you could color with markers, but there's a much easier way using the stamps in the Cheerful Davies, Daisies bundle. So I'm taking the largest daisy and inking it up with Crush Curry ink. And I'm just going to match up, whoops, match up these petals as best I can. 
just like that and press down. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same with the other two flowers. Inking up this one with the Crush Curry ink, matching up the petals and pressing down. And then lastly, I'm going to ink up this small flower and do the same thing. Kind of matching up those petals and pressing the ink down. Okay, so now I have the color on the flower parts. Now I want to add <clears throat> the early espresso to the centers of the flowers. So I'm using, oh, let's do the small ones first. So I've got the smallest stamp for the center of the flowers. And I'm just gonna stamp right over this. And I'm going to stamp in the center of that small flower. And then I'm going to use the larger flower center on the larger flower. So I have that. Now, if you wanted to fill in the white spaces, you could stamp over it, you could color it in with marker if you want, but I like the different texture that you see this way. But I will show you, if you go over the centers and just move your stamp over a little bit, it fills in the center a little more. So if you like yours, um, the center of your flowers filled in just a bit more, go ahead and do that. You're just stamping it in a slightly different place. And then finally, we will stamp the leaf in garden green. Okay, the leaf in garden green. And with this one, <clears throat> you can see there's a tiny little leaf here, and then the two that are really the same shape as the leaf stamp. So I'm gonna go over those big leaves, and maybe even more than once. I'm gonna move them a little bit so I get more ink on them, just like I did <clears throat> with the center of each of those flowers. And then I'm going to go over the small one with the same stamp. So you can see you get some veins and texture and lines in there. And just add the ink until you are satisfied, which I think that looks very good to me. I'm going to move my scrap paper out of the way, and now we'll assemble the card. So my card base is made of crushed curry. For this card, I'm going to adhere basic white cardstock measuring five and a quarter by four inches to both the front and the inside of the card base. Next, I'm going to add this piece of designer series paper, which features that pretty blue. It almost looks like raindrops. In that pattern. And I'm adhering it to the left side of my card base with an equal um, spacing or equal border of the white showing on the top, bottom, and left sides. And then I'm going to add <clears throat> this piece of Garden Green DSP and that strip 
from the that was left over from the previous card. Remember that? We have that three quarter inch strip left from the previous card. Now my border on the right side of this piece of DSP matches the white border on the left side of the blue DSP, but I've raised it above. I have a little more spacing here. Then I'm going to add the strip of Crush Curry Stripe, just about like that. And then I'm going to add my sentiment. Usually I put my sentiment on last, but this time I'm going to put it on before I put the flowers on. And that is because I want to be sure that I can position my sentiment right where I want it and I will work the flowers, make the flowers work in around it rather than putting it here and my sentiment there. This way I know I've created my focal point of the sentiment and then I'm working the flowers in to in a way that will complement um, that sentiment. And for this, because our centers have those holes in the middle, I don't want to cover up those holes with dimensionals. So I'm using mini dimensionals on the areas of some of those petals. This way my dimensionals are hidden from view. Put another one here. And if you feel you need to cut your dimensionals to hide them, by all means you can do that. Um, I do want just a little one right on that small leaf. So I cut a mini dimensional in half right there. And I'll pull off the backings and then I can adhere this, whoops, to my card front. So in this sixth video is really when we're bringing in all of the elements of this product suite and especially using lots of the components of the Cheerful Daisies bundle, not just the DSP. And I think I'm gonna tilt it just like this and maybe even go over that word day just a tiny bit. And I love how that turned out. What do you think? Love, love, love it but I wanted to take the extra time in making this card with you to show you how I added the colors to that one die cut. So there's card number six, and now we'll move on to card number seven. My card base here is made from Moody Mauve, again, the same size, as most of the others. I'm adding basic white as usual to the inside of my card. I've cut a piece of pebbled path cardstock. This measures five inches by three and three quarter inches. Five by three and three quarter. And I'm putting it right in the center of my mauve card base, card front. Now 
Then using the final two pieces of designer series paper, I'm going to adhere these to um, basic white. So this piece of DSP measures two inches by three inches. And my white is, oops, it should be two and an eighth by three and an eighth. And it does not look like that. So let me cut that larger. Make sure I cut this one the right way. Yes. So this one is three by four. So my white measures three and an eighth by four and an eighth. Just to give us a small basic white background. And let me recut that piece of white. I double check my measurements here. Should be three eighths by 10. Yep, I knew the correct measurements, but I didn't cut it correctly. Measure once, cut twice, right? And three and an eight, no. Okay. <laughs> Did that ever happen to you? We're supposed to measure once, or measure twice, cut once. So three and an eighth by two and an eighth inch. Okay, what is the deal here, Mary? Not three and a quarter, three and an eighth. Three and an eighth, there we go, people. My apologies. Three and an eighth by two and an eighth for the basic white layer. Goodness. Ah. Okay, let's add these pieces now to our card front. The larger layers I'm adding to the bottom right of that pebbled path cardstock. And then this other piece, I'm going to pop up on dimensionals and add it to the upper left corner of my pebbled path cardstock. And notice around two of the sides on each of those, I have a nice border of the pebbled path color showing. Next, I want to stamp my sentiment. If you are more comfortable stamping your sentiment before adhering all the pieces, by all means do. I left it to this part because I wanted to know, um, I wanted to be able to see the area that I want it in very clearly. So on this card, I'm stamping, oops a daisy so sorry. And again, I love that the stamp set is photopolymer. It makes it really easy for me to place my sentiment exactly where I want it. Now, previously, I did stamp and die cut this flower. And I want to show you this. This is, um, I used the same solid image of that large flower that I used in the last card right here. And then, but what I wanted to show you is in this extensive collection of dies, there's also single dies to cut flowers like that, okay? So that's what I did. I stamped this image in the Moody Mauve with an early espresso flower center, and then I die cut it with this. So lots of room to play with the stamps and dies and kind of mix and match, which I like a whole lot. I'm going to add the flower with dimensionals. Just like that, I would say. Can go a little lower. And then I've also die cut this, um, what should we call it, branch foliage piece from the 
Pebbled Path cardstock, and this die is also included in the Cheerful Daisies die collection. So this is one of those that doesn't have a stamp to coordinate with. It just allows you to cut out this accent piece for your cards or your paper crafts. I'm just going to, and I only put glue um, near the bottom of those stems because I really did want um, these to kind of stay lifted off of the card front, just for a little more added dimension. And that is card number seven. So let's just quickly review the seven cards we made with that last sheet of beautiful um, Fresh as a Daisy designer series paper. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the, the fun fold. Six and card number seven. So there you have it. When I add it to all, when I add these seven to all of the other cards made in the previous five videos, I now have a set, I believe, of 41 cards. So let's see, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and twelve is twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-nine. Is that right? Four. Let's do this again. Four plus nine is thirteen. Plus twelve is twenty-five. Plus six is thirty-one. Plus another 8 is 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 48 cards. I forgot. I was saying 40, total of 41. It's a total of 48 cards with those last seven. So think about that. Six sheets of designer series paper, and I have six different sets of cards for a total of 48 cards made. So if you're looking to build your stash of cards and you love the Fresh as a Daisy designer series paper, I hope that you have enjoyed these six videos in the series and that you will not only use the One Sheet Wonders to make this set of cards, but use those One Sheet Wonders to make cards with your other favorite designer series papers. Thanks for being a part of this journey on my six-part series of One Sheet Wonders using the Fresh as a Daisy designer series paper. Happy stamping always!